some of the things that we do that we find very effective um, are not going to be high tech. They're actually very simple. Um, Beta manage, mentioned um, shared Google Docs. Those are really helpful as a shared to-do list. Everybody can go in and mark, you know, I did my part, I did my part, I have a question, and we can all work that way. Um, uh, and it almost becomes like a shared bulletin board for project work. It's simple and it's easy and it doesn't take a, a heavy lift to learn how to do it, but it really streamlines both communication and um, helping people feel like they're on top of what needs to be done and they're seeing what others are doing and that disconnect sort of dissipates. Um, I think in terms of um, methods, we also, we like Slack. We use Slack a lot at eCornell. So we use it both for those quick check-ins, you know, how are you doing, do you need anything, quick little hello, but also we have dedicated channels for projects, we have dedicated channels for teams, dedicated channels for, um, a, could be a two day long initiative, but all the team members are gonna be in it and we can Slack throughout the day just constantly. Um, we were um, a little slow to adopt it. Once we got the hang of it and people got it very quickly, we all uh, embraced it and it's, it's become something that we rely on a lot. So I would encourage people to, to use Slack and use it in different ways if you're not used to using it now. Um, I would say, you know, there are differences in, as others have mentioned, in having, for instance, just a Zoom call, which we have all day long at eCornell, um, it is different than having a, a meeting in a room. Um, for one thing, people are staring at your face in a way that they're not when you're sitting side by side and they're looking at your face and you have to be very aware of what you're consciously putting out there with your face um, because they're not picking up on those nonverbal cues of being in a room together and picking up on your energy level. So one thing you have to do, I think, is over communicate. Say, say things verbally that you might not say um, explicitly if you were just in a room together um, so that people are really knowing where you're coming from. And I'll give you an example. If we're in a room and there are 10 people trying to contribute to brainstorming a solution, Zoom can be um, maybe not as easy as it would be if you were in a room together. So it's quite helpful if you have some boundaries put into place in advance, team norms, like for example, today, Jim is leading us through, he's our facilitator, he's calling on people, it's predictable, we know who's gonna speak, we know we're getting a turn, we know when we're expected to participate. If we didn't have that, it would be quite confusing. We'd be speaking over each other, no one would know when it's their turn. So we have clear team boundaries about Zoom calls. Um, we establish a leader who's going to lead the call, who's going to call on people. We use the chat function. I'd like to say something. Call on me next, please. You know, all those sorts of things really help to not let it just be a free-for-all and have someone be um, left out.